Hello everyone and welcome to another video with me 320 Sim Pilot. and today we're going to be looking at the Tolis Airbus A321 in X-Plane 11 and the new update that it has had to version 1.1. I am a real world Airbus pilot but as always this is not for any real world use it's just to give you some extra context on your home simulations. So today we'll compare the version before 1.0.4 with this uh, new update and have a look at some of the details that they've added. Of course this was already a very high level simulation and they've only uh, improved it uh, even more so it's looking really excellent now. Let's take a look. The first thing I want to talk about is the new ground geometry. Now it sits a bit lower to the ground. Here's the old version and the new version. It's hard to see but the engines are slightly lower. If you have a look at this next angle we can see it so the main suspension on the landing gear is compressed more in the new version even though this is at the exact same weight so here's the comparison old and new now let's have a look at the new startup times it's hard to say they've updated the startup times to be more reflective of the difference between the cfm and the iae engines i've always said that the iee engines in the tolis start a little bit too quickly only about 30 seconds too quickly but here we go i've jumped forward a bit here but as you can see from the timer it's taken about 51 seconds to get to the available message in the older version of the airbus and now if we start up the new version it actually ends up taking about the same amount of time it's still about 51 seconds so i'm wondering if perhaps the cfm has been shortened or something to show a difference but i still think that these engines uh, start up a bit too quickly it usually takes somewhere from around 1 minute 20 to 1 minute 30 in the real aircraft depending a bit on the conditions they do take quite a while the iae engines um, so that's something uh, maybe for the future also the new sounds so here we are in the old version but this is with the bss sound pack i must highlight so this is a payware sound pack and here are the new sounds that totus now provide So your preference in sounds will be uh, quite subjective, I'm sure. Here we have the new windscreen effects. They're actually simplified. The original Librain effect that Tolis was using is not working at the moment in Vulcan or x 11.5. So we're back to a more simple effect, but it does now at least work and provide a representation. Quite a nice audio effect as well for the windshield wiper. They are very noisy in real life. In fact, you can hear when pilots are using them often on the radio uh, because it's uh, it's very noisy on the flight deck. I'm imagining a very powerful motor is needed to drive the wiper up and down in up to uh, 230 knots of wind speed, so quite a lot. Next, we will have a look at the takeoff. Before I can explain this one, I'll just say that on a normal takeoff, when you use SRS, the speed reference system for vertical guidance, the SRS on two engines should target a speed of V2 plus 10. And the TOLIS does do this correctly. The V2 today is, I think, 163, as you can see on the PFD. Now, when we get airborne, you'll see that the target speed is actually 173 in the magenta bug on the PFD speed tape. That wasn't quite right because in the real Airbus, although the speed bug would actually stay at 163, it will fly 173. And we're going to see that now. I've uh, raised the acceleration altitude and thrust reduction altitude so we get a good chance to see that uh, in force. These sounds, by the way, are back to the BSS sound effects. Throughout the video, the old version is using BSS. The new version is using the new TOLIS, uh, I believe they're FMOD sounds. Um, so as I said, it'll be uh, down to personal taste. I think both sound packs are actually very good. So here we can see the speed magenta target is on 173, which is not quite right. It should stay at 163, even though the plane will target 173. I can show you that now. Here we are on takeoff again, and as you can see, the same speeds with the 163 V2 shown by that magenta bug. But now, as we get airborne, the, uh, the update means that it correctly models the speed staying target appearing to be 163 but the aircraft will actually fly 173 and if I engage the autopilot you'll see that it uh, does a good job of maintaining that. You may also notice the PFD is ever so slightly different. It's not as big of a change as we saw in the uh, original PFD update that uh, they made to the TOLIS uh, a little while ago but there are some subtle changes to make it look a little bit better which I will show you now but as you can see doing a great job of targeting that 173. 
So here's the older style PFD, which to be honest, as I said, is, is already a, a very good recreation. They updated it a lot since the original version. Here's the newer one, ever so slightly adjusted. You'll see the uh, altimeter tape is slightly wider, a couple of minor polishing details, but uh, yeah, as we say, already a, a very good representation. They've updated the navigation display as well, uh, which we'll see shortly, as well as the radio navigation page has been reworked in the MCDU. This is something I've talked about before. So here we go, here's the old navigation page before we move on to uh, the Rad Lab, which again I think is a, a pretty good one. And to be honest with you, the uh, new version, which we have here, just seems to have some subtle changes to help uh, improve the realism of it. Now here in the old version, you can see that little blue arrow on the green line which shows my level of point in the climb and that works in nav mode as well as in heading mode so if I uh, put it into vertical speed I can adjust it and it will show where I'll level off and it will do the same in uh, heading as well as nav which is always a nice feature but I've often commented on the fact it does not work in the descent which is very frustrating when you're trying to plan your descents or uh, be a bit lazy and use the vertical speed arrow to help you out trying to do uh, an efficient continuous descent. As we can see here if I now select an altitude below me so flight level 8 zero I've gone into vertical speed minus 500 and yet it doesn't give us any level of arrow um, and even if I then adjust the vertical speed or go into heading it doesn't tend to do it. It sometimes does it in nav mode, but uh, almost never in heading. And what's great is, in the new update, they have added this feature. So here we go now in the new model. And I'm going to wind the altitude down, select a vertical speed, as you can see. And immediately we get our blue level up arrow on the navigation display, which is great. And what's even better is it works in heading, it works in nav mode, it works in open descent and vertical speed. So it's really good. I mean, this is a feature the real aircraft has and we use a lot. It's, uh, it's a really handy tool for managing your descent. And now we have it available to us, which is a really great addition. I'm so glad Totalist have uh, added this one in. Something else that's new is the uh, RadNav page has been remodeled and the tuning is now a lot better you can see the ILS is already tuned which it wouldn't do it was always very late at auto tuning but now as you can see the correct ILS uh, this is a flight from Ibiza to Parma and as you can see it has already tuned it so they've done a, a good job reworking the uh, radio nav panel as well the MDAs now also appear on the PFD earlier so there's been lots of little details and polishes like that That's uh, most of the big items I wanted to talk about in today's video. Um, there is a long list available on the Tolis forum which I'll provide a link to. The team have done a great job of updating this product and to keep supporting it uh, a fair while after release is, is really good and to see it keep updating into what is a really, really great product now, especially for Airbus uh, enthusiasts. 500. Here's some footage of an auto land. As we know, the Tolis does do really nice auto lands. The coding is very good, um, so I thought it would be a bit of fun just to have a, a look at one here. While it does that, I'll just mention a few other details that have been added in. Um, and I'm hopefully going to talk about these in uh, my live stream, which I'll be doing tomorrow, where we're going to use the new uh, updated version. But uh, now sure. they've fixed some of the replay mode uh, issues that we were having. The overhead panel has some of the maintenance panel functions now working, including the blue hydraulic pump override, which is a, a pretty great thing we can use. 40, 30, 20, Here's the Autoland touchdown. I think it does a fantastic job. Um, there's also a keep out zone on the engines during uh, power up for takeoff, which is pretty realistic. That's what the real aircraft does. Um, and the GPWS will no longer give you glide slope warnings when you aren't flying an ILS, which is something I have experienced in uh, streams before. And I've had to <laughs> had to switch off the glide slope mode, even though we were doing an RNAV and things like that. So that's all then. Thank you very much for watching for today's video. I hope it's been useful. And as I said, it's not complete. There are plenty of updates. So please do check out that forum post if you'd like to see uh, all of them. I'll be continuing to use the TOLUS A321 in my live stream. So if you'd like to be notified of those, do please subscribe and turn on notifications. And then hopefully you'll see my uh, community posts and upcoming live streams when they are there. As ever, I look forward to seeing you again in another video soon. Keep very well and uh, we'll see you soon. Bye bye.